Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you what a blower switch on a guitar does and why you may want one too. Now, the reason I decided to do this video is pretty simple. Um, this is my latest guitar. It's a very exotic looking one-off Sir that has a blower switch. And uh, it's the first time I've owned a blower switch. Now, I've had similar functionality on other guitars in the past, and I'll talk about how those compare to a blower switch. Um, and toward the end, for those of you that are interested, I'll go through the full specs on this guitar uh, because this is that new one that I was telling you guys about in my last video and I'm really excited about it. It's an awesome guitar. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So what exactly does a blower switch do? Well, the concept is actually very simple. When engaged, the blower switch routes the bridge pickup directly to the output jack and all of the other switches and controls on the guitar are bypassed. So it doesn't matter where your pickup selector is set, it can be in any position, or where your tone or volume knobs are set, it jumps right to the bridge pickup in all of its full glory. Now there are several reasons why you might want to do this. First, keep in mind that by bypassing the volume and tone circuitry and having the bridge pickup direct to the output jack, it eliminates any of the colorization that occurs from simply having the volume and tone knob in the path. It just gives you that true and full bridge pickup sound which is gonna sound like you just gave your guitar a little bit of a boost and a little more bite. This is particularly helpful when playing with an overdriven or high gain tone. Listen to these examples here with and without the blower switch engaged. It's not a huge difference to the ear, but you will feel it when playing. <laughs> Now you might be thinking, that's pretty cool, but I can do that with a boost or overdrive pedal, right? Well, another great use for a blower switch is to use it as a way to get from one setting on your guitar right to the bridge pickup and back quickly. For example, you could be playing with the neck pickup on, and you've got your volume rolled back a little and the tone knob rolled back too, kind of like this. And then let's say you want to jump right to that bridge pickup on full. Instead of reaching down to both adjust your pickup selector and the knobs, you just hit the blower switch, and now you've got that bridge pickup fully on. And if you want to switch back to where you were with that neck pickup with reduced volume and tone or whatever setting you previously had dialed in, you just hit the switch again. I've also heard people talk about using a blower switch as a sort of kill switch, if you will, but I don't find that to be a real practical use of a blower switch. Now, I assume you probably know what a kill switch is, but let me show you how a real kill switch operates. You basically play a note or chord, and then when you press down on the kill switch, it silences your guitar so long as you hold the button down. This allows you to employ a pretty cool stutter-like effect. <laughs> Now let me show you how it would work with a blower switch. So first you take your guitar's volume knob and you turn it all the way down. Then we press the blower switch in so that it, it routes us right to that bridge pickup on full. Then we hit a note and from there when you hit the blower switch again it goes back to your muted sound. So basically you just keep pressing the blower switch rapidly to turn the volume on and off. But as you can see, it's not very efficient and it just doesn't come close to the speed at which you can use a real kill switch. Um, that said, keep in mind, I'm using a blower switch button. Using a blower switch switch um, would work better for the kill switch trick, but still not as efficient as a real kill switch. Now here's a few alternative approaches to a blower switch with the same or similar net result. The first is to install a pure bypass circuit usable via a push-pull knob. I have this on one of my Les Pauls. And when I pull up on the assigned knob, which in this case is the bridge pickup tone knob, it jumps to the pure bypass mode. Now with this approach, the downside is that it takes a little longer to reach down and use a push-pull knob than it does to use a blower switch, just due to the physical movement necessary. But this approach still may make more sense to you than a blower switch if you have a guitar like this Les Paul where you don't want to have to drill through the wood to install it. Um, if you have a guitar like a Strat or one with a pickguard in general, you probably only have to worry about getting through your pickguard and not drilling through the wood. So again, if you have a guitar that you don't really want to drill through the wood in, um, the push-pull knob might make more sense for you. 
Now another option if you want to get that direct uh, pickup sound, but it's a little less flexible, is to install a no load tone control. And I had this on a Charvel once, and the way it works is that the tone control employs a design that bypasses the entire tone circuit so long as you keep that tone knob all the way up, all the way at 10. So you have to lower the tone knob a little for the tone knob to be placed in the chain. But that approach is obviously limiting when you compare it to the blower switch where you can use it you know, to jump from a predetermined dialed in tone right to that pure tone, right? Um, and of course you can't do the, the kill switch trick either. So the blower switch to me is really the most ideal option of all of these. It's easier to use than the push-pull knob and it's more flexible than a no load tone control. It's a pretty inexpensive modification too, uh, probably 10 to $15 for parts and maybe 40 to 50 for labor if you don't wanna do it yourself. Although if drilling is involved, the labor might be a little more than that. All right, everybody, so as we start to wrap things up here, I'm gonna quickly go through the specs on this guitar for those of you that were asking about it. Uh, but first I wanna give a shout out to Distinctive Guitars out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I purchased this guitar. And if you're not familiar with them, uh, they sell high-end and boutique guitars and have a really nice inventory coming in and out of there. Just beautiful stuff, you gotta check them out. So, all right, with this guitar, the body is swamp ash. Uh, the top is a quilted maple top in a satin transparent green finish. And this is a special top. Um, this one was hand selected by Distinctive Guitars at the 2019 NAMM show uh, from Sir. And uh, once I saw it, I was like, ah, I gotta have this. <laughs> it's just so exotic looking. We've got uh, scraped binding to accentuate it all. And then the neck, headstock, and fingerboard are all pal ferro. You know what's funny? When the whole Pal Farrell versus Rosewood debate was going on a couple years ago, I thought it was pretty funny. Because, um, I, I mean, I think Pal Farrell is a, is a great substitute. And, you know, I think a lot of people will point to the fact that Rosewood seems a little more consistent uh, in its coloring, etc. But with Pal Farrell, I found that um, I either love or hate the coloring and the, and the figuring. Um, in this case, I absolutely love it. I mean, just look at, just look at it. I mean, look at the back of the neck, too. I just... I think it's stunning looking. But anyway, for the frets, we've got uh, 24 stainless steel jumbo frets. We've got uh, Sir Locking Tuners. We've got a Goto 510 bridge. Great bridge, by the way. I, I've got one of my other Sir. And then for pickups, we've got a Thornbucker in the neck position and a Thornbucker Plus in the bridge position. Those are the Sir um, signature Pete Thorn pickups, by the way, if you're not familiar with, the, with those. And then in the middle position, we have the ML Standard or the Mike Landau Standard. Again, another Sir. Uh, pickup. Great pickups. I love the tone here. And then for switching, we've got a five-way blade, volume tone, and then of course the little mini push button blower switch. All right, that was my video on the blower switch and what it does for a guitar. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will attempt to answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.